welcome to the Good Creator Lounge. This is where I spend most of my life, and I'm so excited to have such an interesting audience and you know guest today. This is something which we usually call the Actor Circle, but for the first time, and I'm so excited for the creators that are here today. This is the Directors and Producer Circle. So let's give them a round of applause. So just to let you know, guys, because I've been able to do this and have such a fun life interviewing people all my life, but it's incredible that there's this huge ecosystem of influencers and creators and fans of all the shows you make. And we wanted to get some of them in the room with you to ask you questions and really understand how this whole thing works. But first of all, congratulations, because you have a new show that's dropping uh, literally uh, today, because that's when this went live, uh, 14th of March, and it's on Amazon, and it's called Big Girls Don't Cry. And the reason why I have these four illustrious entities sitting here on the sofa today is because they have so much more in common than just filmmaking. But I'm going to first ask you guys to introduce each other because that's what I think will, will get people to really understand who you're about. So how about, Ashi, you introduce Nitya. Nitya is the creator, the director, and just overall beautiful person here <laughs> with us. She's created this show. She's created the idea of this show. It all came from her. And then we all just join the ride. And uh, yeah, the show is about boarding schools. And she is from the school that it's massively inspired by. Yeah. And uh, she's created a really beautiful show, if I may say so myself. Yeah. Amazing. All right, Nitya, yeah. who, which of the gentlemen would you like to introduce? I'll introduce Sudhanshu. Uh, Sudhanshu is the showrunner slash executive producer of Big Girls Don't Cry. He came into my life many, many years ago. We we spoke of collaborating on something. He's from Dune School as well. And the minute I told him about the idea, all girls, he was like, that's it, that's what I need. I, how can I help womankind? And he came on board and he also has written uh, with a bunch of other writers as well and uh, directed two episodes. Amazing. All right. There you go. Would you introduce Karan for us? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Karan is Nitya's better half. That's how I started to get to know him. And then it's been phenomenal. He's an executive producer on the show. He's one of our directors. He's directed two of our episodes. He's been producer of the show. The look, school where we shot the show in, Lawrence School Lovedale, is also his alma mater. And uh, it's a wonderful, beautifully tricky location to shoot at. And we wouldn't have gotten half of it done had we didn't have this old boy pull that we did having Karan on board. Um, yeah, and you're going to see a lot more content coming out with the words directed by Karan Kapadia on it. So this is just the beginning. <laughs> we're very excited. We started off. We, um, you know, we worked up due to the first one together. Thank you. It's very sweet, Sads. <laughs> Karan? Um, this is uh, Ashi Dua, my wonderfully talentedly, irritatingly partner in life. Uh, we, uh, we started a production house together many, many years ago called Mangata Films. And this is our first baby together. And uh, yeah, I mean... And many more babies to go. We fell in love a long time ago and now we started producing babies together. And, uh, I love it. Yeah. So as you can see, guys, there is an insane amount of talent in this room. And I'm super excited for you guys to have a chance to ask all your questions, but I have a couple to start with. So I've always wanted to be a boarding school kid because all my friends who went to boarding school are so bonded with each other, but I've also heard like horror stories at the same time, right? The mean <laughs> girls and the mean boys and the all girls and the all boys. So I, and the first thing I want to know is where did the story come from and what is it that you really wanted to you know, bring across that's really going to resonate, you think, with the audience? Honestly, there are just not enough girl stories. I'm just going to say it and I have been repeating myself. There are not enough girl stories. And uh, it's such an impressionable age, the age that we are dealing with in the show, that I feel like, I think, you know, men, women, boys, girls, everyone just alike needs to, needs to watch what, how vulnerable these girls are and what they deal with. And yet, I want to say that there is a kind of masumiyat and innocence that girls have at that age, that not only girls, everybody has at that age. And I think it is really, really important to put my 40 year old brain behind and just let them be and let those problems because sometimes when we grow older we just look back and we look at those problems and we're like well, that's not even a problem but no at that age it is and so it was really important and I do feel schools school life in general is underrepresented in cinema in India as is girl stories underrepresented in literature and in cinema boarding school life though I don't know if we've seen Besides Nagesh Kukunur back in the day, 
and we i just knew that we have to put it out there you didn't go to yeah. boarding school i think a lot of people don't even know what that is yeah and it's very diverse right the people pe people that come to boarding schools from like literally all over the country yeah. so it's very inspiring for us to be able to build characters that have such different backgrounds yeah and kind of you know but i also love that there's still our own stories you know i love that more and yes. more thanks to ott yeah. we're seeing people who look like us sound like us feel like us and it makes sense but i'd love for each of you to sort of tell me what your individual boarding school experience was like what's really crazy about this is that all four of them are boarding school kids so i can just imagine when you're discussing things you must have had so many things that were widely different but also that similar feeling so what if i were to start by asking you ashi what is that one thing that you think bonds boarding school kids that just stays with you what is that essence that stays with boarding school kids i think the fact that we are all put in the same situation uh in the same place without any sort of outside support you know like you're all in it together yeah. whether you're dealing whatever you're dealing you're in the trenches together so basically like order the fly yeah. 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 yeah you are yeah. survival yeah. of the fittest yeah. yeah it is literally survival of the fittest but just yeah. and, and like even today sometimes when the table is laid out i just go for the food because subconsciously it's like okay if i don't eat it now it's going to get over because that's what it's like yeah. left behind you know so you're constantly fighting for what's yours yes. fighting for what you deserve and all of that and i think it gets inherently rooted in us because we've all just been put in a place where we have to fight for our own mm. space our own you know what we want our own identity like she said we're in a boarding school people come from all kinds of background and then you're together and when you go back home then that's your bubble but then you're thrown into this with different people who come from you know sometimes divorced parents sometimes army kids all kinds of families and then you learn so much which doesn't usually happen in a in yeah. a city school as much because you finish school and you go back home to your parents and then they're protecting you sort so here you're on your own. on your own you know yeah. i was just thinking about this when you're saying this is about obviously a all girls school yeah. so from you guys were in an all boys boarding school some of you i was in a co-ed school you were in a co-ed school yeah. i was in a i was the only one who was in a co-ed you were in a co-ed co as well and you were all girls and you were all, all boys, all boys. Yeah. so What did you imagine an all girls boarding school was like oh, when you were It was I thought it was like Disneyland yeah. full <laughs> of fairies and like beauty everywhere. Yeah. I was so grateful actually in hindsight I'm grateful I went to an all boys boarding school. Yeah. The amount of time I would have wasted on second guessing yeah. if I should step out of my room am I wearing this not doing that blah blah. Yeah. And when you're in an all boys environment you couldn't care. what you smell like what you look like yeah. you know it's just it's not a thing <coughs> only on sundays you put on your sunday best yeah. and you strut about town hoping someone from wellum girls will notice you <laughs> and it's it's funny i mean i but i don't think that's the same for girls schools right the yeah. two things i feel the best thing that came out of being in an all girls school is that living in the uh, like and also i went to school 25 years ago okay so things have changed <laughs> but but Uh, there is something to say about growing up in an India where you are never compared to boys. Mm -hmm. You are just never compared to boys, and I think that is. I, I never. I, it's only in retrospect that I, I now can think of it like that. You're just given all the sport, all the freedom to do what you want, and yet, of course, the teachers are there and they you know cut your wings off when you just want to fly. And yes, there is that thing that oh my God, when will I ever have a boyfriend? When will I ever look at a like? When will that happen? But then they do that. They come on Sundays, and then you figure out how to sneak out. Their Sunday best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's all part of the the thing. I wouldn't change my school years for anything. anything. Karad, what was your experience? Completely different. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you were in oh. co-ed. Because we were in a co-ed school, so your entire. I mean, you went to class together with the girls. You walked them back to girls' school. You you played sport with them. You I mean, your motivation was there most of the time. Yeah. A lot of the time. There was this jock culture that existed in the school yeah, as well. As you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, was, I I couldn't yeah. for the life of me, and I won't judge uh, Nitya Sadanshu's experience about. <laughs> That's shock. Sure. I mean, all I girls, all boys. Also, so if you were boarding no, school, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, this was literally when we were deciding where to shoot. <laughs> yeah. He want she wanted to shoot in Dehradun. I was like, were... there only the show can only be set in the north. That's a fact. And I was like Nenital, and he was like, yeah. Udi. Okay. No, so I, I, I just Udi, knew the like, answer. Like, I was just like, waiting for them to arrive at it because. I, no, no, there was no answer telling. This is the jock culture know, in classic <laughs> full display. No, but that's the thing. Yeah. Also, why would we not create a show about school life? Like, why don't we have more shows? Because yeah. The thing is. 
for everyone, it is about tapping into most likely the best memories of your life. Yeah. Like I core think, memories. Yeah. yeah. So you I, know, the, the one thing I, I would love to know from you is it, what's incredible about filmmakers like yourselves is you bring to life on screen these performances and the reality of situations in the most magical way, and that can't be easy. So I want to know what was the hardest thing to bring to life in Big Girls Don't Cry? Like you wanted to keep real, like a real authentic experience yeah. in boarding school, but it's not easy to replicate when you're, you know, manufacturing. When Nitya spoke to me about the idea and she was like, you guys should come on board. I mean, for me to make something that was so close to home, yeah. I think it resonated with all of us immediately because we all tapped into this nostalgic idea of what it was like. We all tapped into this idea of, you no, know, we did things like this, you did things like that. So I think the biggest challenge was actually building a world that encompassed all our experiences together and still lended itself towards something that was entertaining, something that was meaningful, mm -hmm. something that had a voice that we all wanted to talk about. Doing that subtly, doing that without preaching to the choir is something that's very important for, for how, all of how us as makers. How much of the went to boarding school themselves? No. None of them. Are you serious? No, like I think there's writers, a couple of them. Our writers did. Writers wrote, everybody went to Everybody. Mayo, writers, directors, between us all, creators. it was all sorted. We have yeah. another director, Kopal, who went yeah. to uh, Wellam. Well. Who school. was in Nitya's girl gang yeah. at Wellam. Yeah. Yeah. So then, you know, we, that was yeah. my first week on the show, was sitting around a room batting ideas. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just to... Like, I was very conscious of the fact that, as a man, I'm coming into this world to try and help tell these stories. Mm. And I knew my big scale development would be, I don't know if I succeed, I'm gonna just put myself out there, was shutting up and listening yeah. and seeing, can you empower voices? I don't think you had an option. <laughs> Karan, you weren't even in the room. Let's just get that I'm out there. I'm talking about everything yeah. going no, 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 forward. I'm talking about like, yeah. as a creator, you have a lot of ideas and you, know, you think your boarding school experiences are the boarding school experiences. Yeah. Yeah. But one of the most important parts of this show for me was about listening to female experiences, which are, there's a, there's a very specific mm. politic to that. Um, I remember even when the idea was first, uh, you know, when Nitya first called me with the idea, I was traveling with a different film. I was in Calcutta spending time with my niece and just chatting with her for a couple of days and just looking at how insane those years are and yeah. how bipolar and your moods go all over the place and you're dealing with who am I and how do I fit in and da 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 da. Yeah. And there's an incredible loneliness to those years when you're figuring out who you are. Yeah. And it was almost as if on cue when she rang and I was like, I think we can be of real, we can, we can do something important with these years. Yeah. It's, yes, the show's about boarding schools and yes, it's about musti, but it's also about teenage women figuring out who they are. And I was just gonna say that. So, I mean, there's a room full of creators here today. It's almost like, I was saying there's 46 million creators. It's almost like we're all in a giant virtual mm -hmm. boarding school. I mm -hmm. Where it can be oh. super lonely and it can be super intimidating mm. and everyone has to put on their best clothes and be like, like literally you were just commenting about how well dressed everyone is here today. Yeah. Like, so they probably had to shoot a video before you they came here. You beautiful everybody. Yeah. Everybody well was done. gorgeous. So, but there is, and I, I'm excited to see the lessons and the help that this show is gonna give people. So I'd love to know what are some of the things that, uh, especially creators who live in this world of constant competition, trying to find camaraderie, Trying to, you know, I was just seeing Mike Posner just put up a post about how he took a pill in a pizza to impress Avicii once, right? Literally, and then he wrote a song about it. Wow. But how you do things to impress each other. So, wh what do you think that, especially creators who are in this giant virtual world, should look for in this show? I think, honestly, the, the theme of the show, and I remember I have to give that to Karan, uh, because we were like, okay, you remember how we just need mm. that one through line? Everything yeah. mm -hmm. needs that one through line. And it is, who are you? Know right. thyself. Know it, thyself. Know thyself. Mm. In Hindi, it's Atmanam Vidhi. And so I feel that in a world that is so abundant with, with everything, including content creators, I think the only thing that one can really, really, and this is, this is the theme of the show. It's working Why towards individuality. That. Working towards knowing thyself. And it's mm. not, not, not forcing yourself to be different so that you can find individuality. It's actually just being like, this is who I am. Yeah. And I feel like even for filmmakers, like everybody here, I think with every project that we do, we're just about scratching the surface and saying, oh, can I just get a little more piece of the way I think out there? Out there, yeah. So true. I'd love for each of you to share before I let my wonderful creators here ask the questions. One thing that you think impacted you the most from your boarding school experience that you carry through till today in your life, personal life, in your work? My school motto, never give in. Never give in? Yeah. Amazing. 
I think sisterhood, you mm-hmm. know, like standing up for women, empowering as a woman, empowering other women, just, you know, it, celebrating their achievements Absolutely. like yours. So sisterhood, that's, that's yeah. what stayed with me. Thanks. I think in terms of boarding school, I feel like the value of seeing people, like really, you know, not everyone is the same. Uh, boarding school friendships are like that because you leave your family behind and mm-hmm. you make a new family. You, you can't run home and be like, mom, and tell me about this name, Big Girls Don't Cry. It feels like it evokes a lot of different things for me. I feel like it's giving me a little foreshadowing of what to expect and mm. how everyone says, you know, suck it up. And, and I'm, I'm also getting a little that I'm sure there's going to be some dramatic, climatic, mean girls experience that, you know, the cast is going through as well. So where did the name come from and how do you even start to name an OTT show? <laughs> Well, yeah, that's, it's very difficult, and honestly, it was not our, when we when we started out the idea. It was not. It was called Masoom, and that was just our working title because we never had that. I mean, there's so many other Masooms that have come up, but uh, you know, it was about innocence. But I have to say that the first time that we read it, and I remember Sudan did the narration to Amazon, Aparna, who is, she came and she said the show should be called Big Girls Don't Cry, and I was like, nothing doing. I want a Hindi name, and I want this kind of name, and that kind of name, and this and that. And as the show progressed, and it's, there is, it is a character in the show. Yeah. yeah. And in our script, honestly, there was a true line. Uh, it has so many connotations yeah. because I think everybody knows it's not about the literal meaning, right? Like, I mean, everybody I, cried, I cried last night. Yeah. It's fun. Big it's, girls cry all the time. All the time. <laughs> but this is about not letting that become the narrative, yeah. right? You can't. Yeah. So, and I also, mean, the, even this. I it love this title, this, this the, you know, this idea of big girls. Yeah. Like, I remember in those teenage years, I was in such a rush to grow up. Mm. I thought adults did this and men do that. Yeah. And once I become an adult, then this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And so our characters are going through the same thing. They have this mm. sense of who they are and what they're going to become and what those value systems are going to be. Mm. But in the process, they are fully formed young women yeah. already functional in the world. In the world yeah. And it's about seeing yourself for who and you are. And in that little society, yeah. which, is, which is incredible. It's, Absolutely. So uh, if you could each of you, before we move to the audience, one last question. If you could give, go back and give the boarding school version of yourself uh, either a message from the future, a piece of advice, or something that you wish you could have like this is my healing circle now, clearly. What, what would you say? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just, you know what? It just, just enjoy it because it gets harder. Yeah. It just gets harder. Okay. So, so this is the best years of your life. To put it simply, school yeah. life is the best years of your life. Yeah. 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 Don't be in a hurry to become an adult. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Adults, yeah, adulting is, is so old. <laughs> there was no worries. Yeah. Life was good. Also, don't write off people yeah. in school. Be like, oh, nothing's gonna happen with this kid or nothing, because you never know who's gonna surprise you as an adult. You know, like True. people be it completely written off, and including me today, they are some of the most successful people I know in every way. So don't judge. So don't judge and no don't write off people. No kids are gonna listen to what we're saying. <laughs> but it's true. But, but try. Yeah, it's but it's, it's true. Like, but and honestly, like, I'm sorry, like, no shade at the jock in the room. But the nerds won in the end. We won. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? You know? <laughs> so like all the people who used to, like I was the biggest nerd in school. Like I literally was. And now I added all of the kids in, on Facebook just to show them how good I look now. <laughs> 30 <laughs> years later. It's my revenge. That's good. You know? Well, what about you? Um, you know, like I was a very, very like constantly on it, type A, hardworking kid. Yeah. And all the stuff I remember is the what? shit I did. <laughs> nothing. Uh, you mean adult? <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I, I don't know, I, mean, I, I, I don't know how to give this advice because I'm not taking it even now. <laughs> just do less, just waste more time. Yeah. That's yeah. the stuff that gets left behind. Yeah. Well, that's wasted on this crowd because they all work a little too hard. But, mm. I, but it's good. We should all put it out there so yeah. we work less. <laughs> all right. This is actually my favorite part because I get to do this all the time. But I always, at the end of an interview, feel like when I post it up, someone says, oh, I wondered this. And I'm like, oh, damn, I wish I thought of that question. And more often than not, it's a content creator or a super fan of shows like this. So today, we have a bunch of them here in the flesh and we're going to get them a chance to ask you questions so you can throw it open ask a specific question to someone uh the stage is yours creators of today so who would like to start so hi sir hi thank you so much for having me today so my question is i've been to boarding school all boys 
I've stayed here for six years. I know how difficult and easy it is at the same time. I want to ask you, you have experienced boarding school yourself where you studied and now you experience a boarding school where you suited. So how difficult and how easy was it for you to manage all of these? Like, you know, memories bumping up you and then now you have some shooting part to get done with. So how easy and how difficult was it? I'll start. I, I, for me, the writing process and the recce process of looking up is where, we, at least for me, I did all that memory stuff. The shoot was like going into battle. I think all one wanted to do was get done with the day, prep for tomorrow, look at the next requirement. How do you make sure people are sane and healthy and you're just trying to get everything done and out of the way. So for me personally, shoot was, you know, by then all the nostalgia had a little bit washed off. Um, it was really just about getting the day and making sure we could do justice to the stories. But the writing process, the pre-production process was magical. And it was really an opportunity to relive so many of those uh, days. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, beautiful girl in the pink. My name is Ranjana Godara. So I have a question because I am an army kid. Being an army kid is similar? Yeah, also the culture is very similar. There's a reg regimented system. There's a very hardcore structure of waking up at 5 in the morning, cross country, breakfast. Your clothes have to be immaculate. Absolutely, regardless, every day, everything is rationed. Everyone gets one piece of chicken, one papad, one dal, one chawal. So it's all, it's, it's very similar to that. Especially our school, uh, the culture was, it evolved from an army school, actually. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, this is my favorite part of the interview, which is the actor circle. We love fortune, Talia. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. So now we're going to spin the wheel uh, four times because we're playing four different games and I will tell you the rules as they go. Please, somebody do the honors. Come on, Sats. Let's go. Let's go. Spinning, be? spinning, spinning. He's okay, <laughs> mind your business. Okay, so the audience has already written out some movies. This is basically auction charades. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'm going to have, why don't you, Karen, just pick one of these. Okay. Okay. You can look at that. Okay, so this is the film. Now, nobody say it out loud. All of you uh -huh. can see this film. Uh -huh. Now, the way that this works is each of you is going to do a bidding war against each other. In how many seconds you can act it out? We start at 60 seconds. So, since Karen picked, we're starting the bid against 60 seconds. Can you do it in less than 60 seconds? No. Okay, did any, does anybody want to say they can act this out in less than 60 seconds? 45. 45. Any, any bid no. lower than that? No. Okay, so now when we start the timer, Ashi is going to have 45 seconds to act out this movie. If you guys guess it, she wins. So Otherwise, excited. the next bid will be, Karen will have to do it in 45 seconds. Yeah, I'm so excited. She'll get this. She gave it so she can't guess it. Okay. Oh, good. I know, I know. What's the time? Time's up. Okay, stop. Karen, you Karen, have 45 let's go. seconds. Guys, let's go, Karen. Come on. I'm so excited. <laughs> It's a Shahrukh film, guys. Just say a Shahrukh film. <laughs> <laughs> there are multiple Shahrukh films. You can't be can't doing do letters and all now. Can't do that. Hey. Oh, thank you. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> all right, amazing. Spin the wheel. Go, Karan. Oh my gosh. Yes, conference. <laughs> Right. Okay. Yes, conference is where my creators get to turn into the press for the day. Okay. And the four of you are not going to see this chalkboard. Only the audiences. Nobody say anything out loud. 
This is the name of a character from a film, a character from a Bollywood film. Mm. Now, the press here is going to ask you questions that help you figure out who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to come in not knowing who you are, but just pretend to be a very over-the-top character that is all on the other side of the All of us are the same. You're person. all the same. Okay, amazing. Okay, good. All right. So, uh, I'll introduce you at your press. Settle down, settle down. We all win if we... No pictures right now? Okay, sir, ma'am, ma'am, ma sir, ma'am, please, please, please. Uh, come, uh, come forward. The press uh, is here. Go, go, go. The press is ready. Uh, All right, hold can hold we hold have it. some questions? Please raise your hand if you have a question. Yes, ma'am, in the pink. Yes, go for it. Manoj from Gangs of No, 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 that's not it. That's not it. Any other questions? Any other questions from the press? Nawazuddin, Siddiqui. Nawazuddin. Congress no. Party. Mumbai say Mandwa Mumbai say Mandwa Sir, that is very good. So you can, yes. Hakipat? Ritik. Oh, Amitabh Bachchan. Yeah. All right, you oh, got it. it. Oh, Vijay Oh, okay. All right. yeah. Perfect. Well done. Spin that wheel. Come on, Karan. Normal, normal. Come on, come on. Oh, wrong. This oh. Is <laughs> okay. Just. This is a game of wrong answers only. So I will take turns asking That's you a question, but you have to give the wrong answer only. Are you ready? Okay. Let's begin. What color is your shirt? Yellow. What's the main ingredient in chocolate cake? Um, Pista. Start. What? <laughs> 76 into 5. 82. What's the main plot of Big Girls Don't Cry? It's about, it's a gang war. <laughs> What's your favorite OTT show? Um, Braveheart. <laughs> okay. Ja Simran Ja is a dialogue from which movie? Uh, rock on. <laughs> Finish the lyrics, Aja Aja Mehe, Mehu Pyaar Tera. Sorry, let me do that again. Yeah. Finish the lyrics, Aja Aja Mehu Pyaar Tera. <laughs> what do birds do? Uh, bark. <laughs> All right. Good nice. job, guys. All right. Nice. All right. So the way Trust Me Bro works is that everyone has come up with something that is the truth and something that is a lie. We don't know the answer. We're going to go one by one. And starting with Ashi, she's going to tell us one truth, one line, whatever order. You can ask her follow-up questions to try to figure out which is the truth and which is the lie. And then we will vote. And then we will see how good your guess on her acting is. Are you ready? Ashi, okay, so tell us. I have to just say Say something. two things, two statements in any order. You could say the truth first it's or the last. It's a man's first. world. And the other one? Um, women are better leaders. I'm now Whoa. very confused. Whoa, Whoa it's okay. controversial. I like it. Do you have any questions? <laughs> First of all, which one's true, which one's false? Yeah, you tell which, me which they, one they is true and which one is false. No, we I mean, don't we, have we, to. They we, have to. What's okay. Correct. That's a lie. Can we move both ways? Is there anybody no think it's the other? Yeah, she's already left your life. It's actually supposed to be a truth and lie about you. Oh. oh. I thought it's a truth and lie in life. In ah. life. Ah, no, it's about you. So this, this is because you have to say something that is oh. uh, a truth or a lie, and then people have to try to figure out whether you're lying or oh. telling. Are you ready? Let's start with current. Let's start with current. <laughs> Trust me, bro. <laughs> Free speech is an illusion. Again? About Again, you. It's about For you. me, it's about me. <laughs> um, trust me, bro. I'm very good at math. And uh, and uh, trust me, bro. I'm super fit. All right. So now you can ask him any follow-up questions. Like you can give him a math test, or you can ask him where he works out, and then try to figure out. Any questions? <laughs> What's your question? Okay, so can you tell me what is 10 into 10? 10 into 10? Yeah, I want to check how good 100? Bus. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions before we vote? How often do you hit the gym? Six times a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a total lie. <laughs> okay, so okay, let's vote. Okay, who thinks the truth is that he's good at math? One person, based on 10 is to 10. Okay, amazing. More people think he's, go to the gym. Who thinks he's a gym rat? <laughs> Look, wow. You have to vote. You have to vote for one. Let's do this again. Who thinks he's great at math? Okay, and who thinks he's a gym rat? Okay, which one was the lie? Uh, we forgot. Both, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Nobody's understood this game. All right. He has broken the game. You've broken the game, but that's... 
a, a, a very clear indication of what it's like hanging out with boarding school kids. But guys, this has been so, so much fun. So before we wrap up, I'd love for uh, each of you to tell us about something to look out for in the show, an Instagrammable moment, if you please, uh, that my creators here should look out for since the show is dropping on the 14th of March. Don't miss it. It's seven episodes. Yes. yes. Um, and you can watch it on Amazon, so Amazon Prime, so make sure you watch that. What is a piece of the show, a part of the show that everyone must watch out for and that you think they will stop and watch again? I know you mentioned one earlier, but mm -hmm. I'd love to hear the one girls. from each of you. The girls. Yes. All right. The boys. <laughs> I mean, I know the show's called Big Girls Don't Cry, but we put as much work into all the boys that come in and out of their lives. And they rip. again, we went after the spectrum of male experiences also in boarding school, even though it's from the perspective of girls. Yeah. And they are rocking. Love Great it. boys. Just worth watching out for. Nitya? Okay. I don't, I, I, everyone, the honesty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, it's, it's the girls. I, I don't think there's anything fresher than this bunch of uh, people that are just going to enter into the world of entertainment. And uh, I'm, I know I'm using up a double, but the music, the this music album, ah, it's going to be, it has to be on your reels. It's just mm, yeah. amazing. Seven yeah. kick ass, soulful, completely yeah. different songs, just kick ass. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys. And thank you for being such a great thank audience. You. Super thank excited you. to watch this show. We're all going to be thank catching you. it together. Thank you, thank you for watching. Yes, My thank you.